Hi, uh, I had a few questions regarding uh, some posts I made earlier about some fly tying videos that I did with my iPhone 12, well, preliminary fly tying videos. Um, and I, it was kind of like, how do you have that set up or what does my setup look like? So I'm just going to kind of run through that a little bit quick, um, kind of giving ideas. Uh, what I found over the last you know couple of years trying to do videos and things like that is there's two like really key factors that you have to figure out um, if you want to do fly tying videos. And that's, that's whether you want to do it for instructional purposes or if you just want to show off your fly tying abilities or skills. Um, and first thing is um, lighting, uh, lighting position and things like that. So you really get a nice, uh, beautiful image and beautiful video and footage. Second is camera position. Do you want the camera facing device or facing you? Um, I happen to like it as my point of view so that the, the viewer can see exactly what I'm seeing when I'm tying. Um, but a lot of times you'll see uh, a video, a fly tying video where the fly is about in the middle of somebody's chest or something. So you kind of see it from here down. Um, and that's just because the camera's on the opposite side of the vise. Um, so I'm going to kind of go through what I have. Um, and then I, I have a, a, a not fancy light setup, but I have a, a fancy light setup, if you will. Um, it's not super expensive, but I'm going to give you some tips and tricks at the end of this to um, help you with budget conscious um, and, and get you the kind of the same effect for a little bit cheaper price, if you will. Um, so first thing is uh, you're going to notice on my desk over here is that you can see a lot of stuff. There's a lot of clutter on my desk. There's um, there's wires, there's cables, there's pieces of material, there's, you know, a, a pair of scissors. There's there's just a lot of clutter. Um it doesn't really matter what's on your desk. It matters what the camera view sees. So the camera's only gonna see about this much, about this much right here. Um, so as you can see through here, right? It doesn't see anything um, out here at all, right? Nothing. All it sees is what's focused right here. So it doesn't really matter what's on your desk as long as it's not in view of your camera lens. That's the most important thing. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stop that. Um, so what I have here is an overhead light uh, that's a nice long bar. It's, I think, like 40 LEDs in there or something. I can't remember. Um, but it's an adjustable brightness. So I can adjust that brightness depending on uh, how much light I need to come down for that particular fly or if it's just a, whatever positions may be, conditions uh, need me to adjust that light. The other two things I have here is two side lights. Um, and I have... One kind of on the camera side, about a 45 degree angle, and that gives me nice, uh, nice soft light that comes in from to the front of the fly, and then uh, and it allows me to rest my hand on the vise um, and tie it a good position, without actually getting between the light and the fly or the the light and the hook, if you will, the light and the vise. Um, so I get a nice line of sight with the with the light coming in without blocking it here, and then you can't see anything. So on the camera, um, it gets a nice, if you guys can see down here for just a moment, it gets a nice soft light all the way to the front of the fly. It's a really pretty, pretty but if I cover that up, see the shadows almost are instantly. So uh, it, it's a really beneficial light to have that in that position. Um, the other one is the taller light that I have back here. It's on a taller stand, if you will. And that's just a little bit taller and it's not quite a 45 degree angle. It's probably 20 degree angle. And that's really just kind of get um, the light coming in this way. So when I say, like when I go to attach material, um, you can see the tip of that material really well on the camera because of that light. So that's what the purpose of those lights and the positions are. Um, I have this light, which is an extremely bright light. It's a great light uh, for tying on my own, like when I'm just tying for myself. But as you can see, um, it really kind of, is too bright. Um, there's no adjustment brightness on this, so it's almost too bright for videos. It kind of uh, just washes everything out. Um, so I've got these other lights kind of set up, and if you notice, there's a there's a little panel I can take out here, um, and this is just a light diffuser, uh, basically just a small piece of plastic. Comes in different colors. Um, comes in, I think, uh, opaque or white, uh, red, blue, green, a couple different colors you can get with them. Um, and what that is is really just right in the name. It diffuses the light. So it's not a big bright white light source. Um, it, just because you have a bright light doesn't mean it's the right light. It's the, it's the right light you have to have for filming. And it's a little bit different than 
uh, the bright lights that you see um, a, a lot of people a lot of people tying with um, so keeping in mind that diffusing light is kind of the key here um, you the all of, all three of these lights right here the tall one and these two ones that I'm using for filming are all from a company called newer and that's n e e w e r um, they're, they're really nice lights they come in multiple stands um, they're extremely good they're they're, they're bright, uh, they're diffusible, they're dimmable, they're adjustable, the height, positions, everything, they're, they're fantastic lights. Um, but um, I also have, but they're probably, I think this set was, I think, $29. I think this set was $89 or something on sale. So it's a little bit of an investment if you want to do it that way. However, um, this light, which is a really extremely bright light right here, um, is a little $5 desk lamp from, from Walmart. Um, so you can get cheaper lights. Uh, the only problem I have with this is it's, it's a little bit of a yellow light rather than a white light, and it is awfully bright. Um, so if you have lights around the house, not that you, not that you can't use this light. I could use this light. Um, I just don't have, um, I just wanted something a little more specific for tying, um, and that I can use in my photo box. Um, and these lights will just go right out of that photo box really nice and easy. If, if you don't have a light that has a diffuser or a built-in diffuser or um, a way to just, you know, slides in and out nice and easy like this does, don't worry. There's cheap alternatives that work really, really well. Um, one of those is uh, you can go to the like, Dollar Tree and get like a cheap shower curtain for like a dollar um, or a shower curtain liner. Get the opaque ones, not the clear ones, opaque, kind of like, like this off-white color. Um, and you can just cut it to the shape, you know, a little bit bigger than you like, put a rubber band around it, bam, light diffuser. Um, the second option and one that I've, that I've used, um, and I really like is using parchment paper, um, really cheap and get that Dollar Tree too, or Dollar General, Walmart, wherever. Um, the great thing about parchment paper is one, it's foldable, it's shapeable, it's really easy to work with. It comes on a humongous roll. Um, and two, you can color that with Sharpies or any kind of marker. And now you can have red, blue, green, whatever colors you want, and you can get that light diffuser. Uh, specific for whatever application you need. So there is kind of my setup, if you will. Um, everything's kind of cluttered here, but uh, as you saw in the in the the, the setup film, um, uh, if you have a backdrop, if you don't have a backdrop, um, you can use uh, you can use anything. You can use an old shirt, you know, that doesn't have the like, graphics or something on it, or maybe you want to put your graphics on it. Maybe you want to um, promote your company or something. You can use a shirt as a backdrop with your company logo on it. Just keep in mind, anything that back there may take away from the the uh, the fly itself. So you can use a, a black shirt, just turn it inside out, make sure all the lint's gone off of it. You can use white, you can use black, something soft. A t-shirt will work really, really well. Um, and then if you notice during the video, uh, one thing I didn't hit on, and I apologize for that. Um, if you look down here, um, this is just a, a, a plate that we usually use so we can see material and we're tying, but it's, I didn't just put it there by mistake. Um, I didn't just take it off my vise and sit it on the, sit it on top of the base for any, for weird reasons. I actually set it there. So it reflects the, the light from underneath to the bottom of the fly, um, with a softer effect rather than just mirroring the light from this big light bar above. Um, that actually kind of absorbs the light and diffuses it when it reflects it back. So it's a nice soft white um, glow, if you will, from underneath. So now I have very few shadows because of the light positioning and this backing plate or the, this plate right here that allows me to a nice soft thing. Um, if you don't have a fancy backing plate like this, no worries. Um, another cheap solution. You can use that parchment paper. A um, little noisy if you drop something on it. Or you can use a paper plate. Uh, a cheap paper plate, about five or six inch. You can cut it around. You can cut a little slot in it so it sits right underneath. And the great thing about that, whatever materials you, you snip off, you take the paper plate, throw it right in the trash can. So one one solution there for reflecting the light back. Um, again, uh, I know that I said quick, and I apologize this wasn't as quick as I wanted it to be. Um, thank you all for watching. Um, oh, um, there is one thing you kind of want to think about um, I actually a couple more things while I'm, I'm on the subject. <clears throat> and that is, before you start filming, clean your camera lens. Um, that is most important. You, you don't want to take, you know, 20 minutes to do a video and then just to find out that you have some dirt or lint or something on your camera lens. So, um, one of these little eyeglass cleaners works really, really well. Wipe your lens off before you go. Um, and number two, if you're doing any type of audio, um, 
this shirt like right here is kind of noisy um and that's because it's it's just made of that material it's kind of stiff um anytime you move it's going to crack pop things like that so if you're gonna be tying and doing some audio wear a nice soft shirt a t-shirt um something like that this that's not really going to crinkle pop um it's really soft material one it also helps absorb sound so it's not bouncing off sound but two when you're when you're working this close and the camera's actually here it's really going to pick up any movement from your shirt so just wear something kind of nice and soft um i think that's it if you have if you have any questions um comments anything like that please let me know in the comments below um thank you all for watching and if you would i would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe that subscribe button down there um thank you all for watching and um, we'll catch you next time